Welcome to our Tempo Storm feature video on the ideal curve in Arena. Since the inception of Hearthstone, one of the things we often discuss is Curvestone. It's the concept where you're able to play the strongest minion starting from turn 1 by using all mana given every turn. It can be hard to play against because there's little to no control over a ridiculous on-curve start. Even in Standard, where you have many control tools to get back in the game, Odd Rogue is a prime example of a curve deck that's very difficult to deal with. In Arena, where you have even less control tools, knowing the ideal curve will make your decks much stronger. For those of you watching, how many of you have drafted a seemingly powerful Arena deck with multiple legendaries but only happened to win three games? And how many of you have drafted a deck with no high-quality cards but have won six or more games instead? A curve is such an important concept that many players often don't account for it. Our arena expert Tachi is able to take advantage of a player's lack of a curve and pile on the pressure while his opponent is still holding cards. During drafting, it's very easy to pick a flashy late-game card over a curve card. It's also possible to draft too many situational cards and have them stuck in your hand while you're unable to play anything on your key turns. There's a general preference to pick strong reactive cards that may also end up sitting in your hand for a whole game over strong proactive cards. While having control cards will win you some games sometimes, drafting a proactive deck will give you more consistent wins without even needing reactive cards. Remember, every card has an opportunity cost. This is the question. How soon are you able to play the card the turn it's drawn? Late game minions such as Violet Worm and Primordial Drake are very powerful, sure, but they're stuck in your hand until you reach turn 8. This means you need to control the board first for these cards to shine. So, what's the ideal curve? As a disclaimer, the ideal curve of this video is a reflection of the current meta, which means it changes over time. For example, in Whispers of the Old Gods, a heavier curve was more successful, while a lighter curve was more successful in Goblins and Gnomes. Generally, the bare minimum of a curve doesn't really change too much and is a guideline for all classes. These are the numbers we suggest. 5 to 6 1 to 2 mana cards. 5 good 3 mana minions. 3 to 4 good 4 mana minions. 3 good 5 mana minions. And around 5 plus late game cards, including heavy minions, card draw, or card generation effects. When we say good minions, it needs to have competitive stats for its mana cost. For example, a good 3 mana curve minion should have at least 7 stats. Conversely, there's Stonehill Defender. It has a value effect but only provides 1 attack and 5 total stats on the board, which makes it a poor curve minion. Now, this guideline is by no means inflexible. If you're missing 5 drops, for example, you want to have more 3 drops. On turn 5, at least you can play a 3 drop in hero power. Likewise, if the draft offered very little 1 to 2 mana cards, you may want to take more 3 mana cards so you aren't skipping turn 3. Why is turn 3 so important? There are a lot of strong 3 mana minions in the arena. Most of these 3 drops completely shut down 2 drops and can even trade up to 4 drops. This is why turn 3 is a crucial turn, and you absolutely cannot miss it. Now, a question you might ask is, aren't you just drafting mid-range for all your arena decks? At the start of the draft, that is your default path for an arena deck. However, what differs between decks is how many control or aggro tools you end up getting. Each draft is going to be different, and we're here to give you a guideline of how many high and low cost cards you want in your deck. A control deck will naturally have a heavier curve, but is only able to do this because they have a variety of removals. If you think you're a control deck because you have four Dragon Moss Scorchers, this would be incorrect as that's simply a lot of minor effects. Now, if you had a Scorcher, a Mass Hysteria, a Holy Nova, a Shadow Word Death, and a Mind Control, then you have a much better control deck. Of course, even here, the curve is still important. As a control deck, you want to be avoiding most one drops, and you usually end up passing two drops as well. You would then compensate by having a lot more three drops. A functional control deck requires you to have playable minions, or else you're always reacting to your opponent's play. What if they played an Arena Fanatic and you didn't draw your mass board clear? You end up losing to a bad card because you keep passing your turns instead of playing minions. Now, that's a lot of cards you want for the ideal curve. How do you know when to draft for curve versus value? For your first 10 picks or so, you can simply pick the best card. For best practices, you want to reassess your deck every 10 picks. 
Also, during the last 10 cards, you're constantly looking back at what you already have and picking the best card for your deck rather than simply the best card. And at this point, what's the best for your deck? Filling the missing mana pieces in your ideal curve. In summary, the curve is an important factor when it comes to drafting a good deck. You will substantially increase your win rate if you pay more attention to the curve as opposed to drafting for value, and finding the best balance between the two will net you more wins, more gold, and more packs. We hope you learned something from this video covering a core concept that will always be important in Arena. As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video for more quality Hearthstone content. Thanks for watching.